Hi, and welcome to another episode of Wine and Wisdom. I'm Thomas Le Huang, and you're listening to the TO Podcast, where knowledge is shared and no one takes themselves too seriously. Can you believe it's uh, almost Jeez, the end of the year already? Unreal. We're about to start the last quarter. It's the end of another quarter. Yeah, yeah, that's Jesus. crazy, isn't it? <laughs> in a um, long six months, this every, everything started two quarters ago. I only realised at the doctor's yesterday when he said you haven't been here for six months. That was the start of March. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it was just a month ago. No. <laughs> 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 Start of March, right. so it's been six months of... Uh, six months, but ha- what a ride. There is so much that's happened in that six months. So much. Yeah, we know that, we know that. So it's the end of a quarter for salespeople, so that's an amazing thing. So some people are going to go home with a big fat check, some want. With a big fat and, nothing. And then I was just thinking about this, about one of the subjects that you brought up, which is why would some agents do so well? Because maybe they're persuasive enough to sell themselves versus the people who are probably pushy and... Uh, are not going to really get uh, clients to be on their side. So, so let's let's talk about the difference, boys, between persuasive agent and pushy agent. Yeah, right. Can we but talk before about we start it? Yeah. Let's get into <laughs> our need, wine first. I need, it's been <laughs> a long six that. months. I need a drink. <laughs> it's been a long it's two weeks. Three since days. Our, uh, last podcast. It's been, so, what are we going to have today? We're, we're going to have to go mine first. first. With yeah, let's do it. It's amazing how great minds think alike yeah, and all <laughs> following each other we've around. Both bought a uh, Shiraz cab. And Thomas and I are both going Barossa. I thought we'd celebrate the South Australian border opening with New South Wales by flying straight down to the Barossa Valley and grabbing a, a Well, nice, that's, uh, that's what I'm doing. Well, yeah, enough, that's so have I. Mine's from South Australia too. So oh, there you go. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, no bloody good ones in Queensland, old comrade <laughs> out there. All right, so mine is a Whistler uh, Shiraz Cab 2017 from the Barossa Valley. Uh, Whistler is a very small winery just outside of Adelaide. Um, Been run for a little over 80 years. The Vines, the guy who started it, was lucky enough to start the winery with a cutting from Hermitage in France. In France, wow. Um, And they've developed their wines since then. This one was was actually gifted to me, this one. So I I did a bit of research on a few different wines that we landed on the doorstep. And this was the one we chose in the top 25% of... (laughs) Shiraz cabs in the country. Wow. No, sorry, not in the top 25%, in the top 25. In the top 25. 25 bottles. Yes. Wow. What, with the holiday selection? or It's what? 93 out of 100 on holiday, this wow. one. And it's uh, the top 25 as it was, they're listed on wow. Vivino. So okay. um, it's had a little bit of time to breathe and we'll uh, rip into it and see how we go. That's good. All right, so what's the difference between the two? Persuasive agents versus... Pushy. It's a, it's a big subject, I think. Personally, I think w- when it comes to persuasive and pushy agents, I think the agents who really have that desperate sort of tone in their voice about getting a sale over the line or begging for business and so forth, It's there's an old saying, commission breath. What is that? Have you not heard that before? No. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Cheers, Let's boys. Cheers. 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 Nice. It's all right. Bit young, but still nice. going. Yeah, a bit young. Just air. Yeah. When you're thirsty, <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> oh, very quiet over there, mate. I'm no, still enjoying it. I think we just open it, so we just want to wait for another one. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm still reserving. Needs to uh, his opinion. Needs a bit more oxygen. Mm. It's interesting. Um, one thing that the last six months has brought us is um, you find out who the pushy versus persuasive agents have really been. A lot of agents have gone out of business and a lot of agents have had their best quarters or their best months or their best time in their career and I, I think that's a pretty fair indicator. You and I were talking the other day about the way the market has changed and how closing a, a deal has changed, you know, yeah. closing a listing. Um, I, I was talking to someone else today and we were on one who was used to walking out of every listing appointment with the signature or at least going 10 rounds trying to get the signature and that can't be done now. The, the whole method of uh, how you list a property or how you deal with your potential vendors has changed. And, and same with sellers, uh, same with buyers, sorry. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, I know you had some thoughts on the reasons, but people are being much more 
selective and much yeah. more uh, taking much more time before making a decision. Yeah. So in those conditions, the pushy agents are never going to laugh. They're never going to make it. They'll never get the listings, and I think that's what we're seeing a bit of now. It takes a lot of training and it takes a, a pretty high level of skill to be able to adapt to the new market conditions as they happen, I think. Um, and that in itself is a is a yeah, I don't know if I even like the word persuasive, but that to be able to adapt is one of the methods of your persuasion because you can't. But so what do you think is persuasiveness? What's an agent that's persuasive? There's an old saying that I heard it's persuasive you get the other person to do what you want and have them like it, like doing it. That's being persuasive. For me, persuasive is goes more than just negotiation. Being persuasive for me is listening more than you talk and understanding who you're talking to and why they're actually doing something. I think uh, there's a fantastic book that we've all read, which is How to Win Friends and Influence People. And I think Dale Carnegie, there's a few lines in that book that are absolutely amazing. Um, what is it? A man convinced against his will is still of the same opinion. Mm -hmm. Another one was you can't win an argument. If you win, you lose because the other person now has lost and there's a, a withdrawal of some sort there. So I think when it comes down to being persuasive, having that ability to connect with people and actually getting your point across you know, logically and concisely so they understand exactly why yeah. you're trying to help them. So to me, the difference between persuasive and pushy is, is where the centre of attention is. Being persuasive the centre of attention is in the other person. Yes. Right. Where being pushy, the centre of attention is me. Right. Right? And I think that that's the start. And when you start from there, it would be like testing the sound of the speakers by testing the machine itself or the ear of the listener. And when you are persuasive, I believe, by listening to the other person, you actually getting feedback and that allows you to change your angle where a pushy salesperson because their center of attention is themselves they can't get feedback from outside that's right therefore they can't even change the angle and even if sometimes they do change the angle that angle might not even hit target the difference in mindset between giving and getting absolutely and that's the biggest thing i try and train my people in is walking up to a door or preparing for a listing appointment Asking yourself, how can I help rather than Shh, I've got to get this listing, I've got to get this listing or how much comms in this listing or that sort of wraps in a nutshell. It's, it's a difference between giving and getting and that's what Thomas is saying. If we're sitting in a listing appointment, all we're thinking about rolling around in his head is how can I get the signature, how can I get the signature, how can I get the signature, it's going to come across and that generally those type of people don't have uh, a tap dance in them. Um, when the person says no, they don't really know where to go from there. Hang on, I've just fired all my bullets and they still haven't signed. Now what do I do? Yep. How do I get it? How do I get it? And they're still not thinking, how can I help? And that's also where I think you end up in a situation where you're dropping your fee considerably and or, or you know giving away marketing or all these things yep. because you're only in one mindset of how can I get? Do you believe all skills are learnable? It can be learned. <laughs> it's whether they can be executed. I mean, anyone can read a book, yeah? We can all read the same book. I'll bring it down to singing. We all can learn to sing. Some of us will be better than others. Yes, that's correct. I, I, I think too, it's whether you're paying the price. Uh, I see a lot of people who learn a little bit, they scratch the surface and they, they think they've learned. Yeah, right. And then you have the people who really pay attention. For example, I've been reading a book on negotiation uh, lately and it was from an FBI agent, an ex-FBI agent. Chris Foss? And... Yeah, that's correct. And a lot of things that he's teaching, I know the majority of people would never do because yep. his style of negotiation comes from the understanding of the psychology of the other person. Yep. Which, if you don't even spend time understanding the psychology of yourself, of a person, how the hell are you going to take that book in? Which yeah. is a very good point because a lot of his negotiation is prefixing things with questions. Would it be okay if I... Would you be all right if I did this? And you're getting the other person's buy-in automatically. So again, like we said before, you're automatically more interested in what the other person wants rather than in what yourself uh, needs. Well, they're, they're persuasion techniques, though, rather than. But those are that. Those are the, like Thomas was saying. I believe that no, you've got not, to pay not, the price. Yeah, I don't believe it's persuasion techniques. One of the things you have to realize is this: 
if you got someone at, uh, he had an, an, an experiment where if you had someone at about 90% and they could win 100%, these people will do actually less to get that 10% than the people who do from 45 to 55, you know? And so that is not a technique. That is how a human being reacts. Now, the if I would you that he just used is what I'm talking about. It's something I train. It's a neuro linguistic programming. If you, if I did something, would you do something? Yeah, is a uh, NLP. Ploy is a horrible word, but right. it's a technique to get people to say yes more often. That's what I meant by persuasive yeah. technique rather than uh, you got to have some tools in your tool. You got to have lots of tools in your toolbox. That's but right. It starts with. Being a decent human being to Absolutely. start with and then coming in with a mindset of how can I help this person rather than how can I get something off this person. You could use all the if I would use in the world if you're only there for one reason. That's it's, true. It's not, yeah, you're right. Yeah. You, you probably won't even get to the point to ask Absolutely. But how do you help that person if you don't understand the psychology of that person? Yeah, no, right? Because we let's imagine that we want help on a matter. Already the three of us will want to help differently <laughs> you know, on, on that matter. So... If you're a persuasive salesperson, you'd want to know, all right, I'm now dealing with Cameron. This is how he wants to be persuaded into that product. So the presentation will have to be geared specially for you. Yes. Me sitting next to you, I might go, no, that, wouldn't, that wouldn't sell me. That's right. I, I, that wouldn't persuade me, right? Mm. But then it got you. And it's the same thing that I teach uh, new recruits. I say to them, first you have to find out whether they like you singing like Barbara Streisand or m and Once you have identified that they prefer one or the other, now you put mm. in the lyrics. Otherwise, they're not going to pay attention. Uh, as a matter of fact, they're probably going to switch off before you even start. Yeah. Yeah. So two ways of learning all that stuff. You can study a lot of books on psychology. Yeah. Or I, I believe, and I, I was interviewing someone today and they asked me a question about what do you think the three key tools that are – someone coming into the industry needs to have to be successful. And I just firm believe that there isn't enough books in the world to, to count for life experience. And whether you like it or not, or whether you realise it or not, as we're living life and as we're going through certain things, we're in a way studying the psychology of that situation. People like yeah. who they are like. So if you can come up with a like-like story when you're with people, whether it's in their lounge room or whatever it may be, list listing presentation, absolutely, you can build connection that way. Well, you can study the psychology of it. If you've been around a divorce or through a divorce, there's a fair chance you understand some of the psychology of the listing appointment you're going to yeah. for a divorce. If yeah. you've... Yeah, As a 22-year-old, kind of be able to... A deceased that. estate, you know, story, if yeah. you haven't been around death or had death in your family, True. but if you have... You've studied the psychology of, whether you realise it or not, you know the psychology of that yeah. situation. So I guess how does someone brand new or 20 years old coming into the industry who doesn't have that life experience, how do they study the psychology of someone? You read. You know? yeah. I think you can read. This, listen, we don't have a life long enough to experience everything. No, good, no. But thanks to books, we can actually access to a very, very intelligent people and people who have spent a lifetime condensing it in 200 pages. Mm. So reading, you always win. That's why to me, the beginning of a persuasive agent is a person who is willing to learn, mm. right? So you're talking about the three traits. I think unless you're a student of human behavior, you'll never be able to persuade. That comes down to, I think, like I said before, the first one is you, regardless of the life experience you've got, you need to be listening for the hidden messages within a conversation. 100%. And those, and those, and that's what I'm training on the boys on at the moment is um, motive, finding the true motive. Because most people, as, as we know, where they skim across the top and they don't really get to that true emotional reason. Listen between the lines. Listen to the words they're not telling you and, and ask more questions. Be yep. inquisitive. Yep. It, the more questions and the more qualifying you do of that person, um, it's only going to help you to build that picture in your mind. But that's impossible to do if your mindset isn't there about how can I help. Yeah. So you because said the three qualities of the a new agent. So you said one was life qualities and uh, life experience? Yeah, I didn't actually. Yeah, I, what well, was the other two? Oh, honesty and integrity was the first thing. Work ethic and... and um, so honesty and integrity. Yeah. Work ethic. 
and, and life experience. Willingness to learn as well. Okay. Yeah. If, I didn't actually use life experience. I was thinking about it afterwards because it was it was a great interview because she sprung it on me. It's not yeah. something I've ever been asked before in an interview. So I had to tap dance and I was like, Who asked you that? Uh, lady I was interviewing today for a sales position. Okay. And she asked you. She asked me. Hey, and she's an She interviewed person. me. No, she's 26. She, okay, she starts Smart. next week. She interviewed me. Are you going to hire her? If not, give me a number. <laughs> we need someone. Um, not so committing to anything at the moment. Okay, so life but experience. I, let's, say, let's say a younger agent. Uh, she's 26 asking those questions. That's that's fantastic. But let's say we've got a 19, 20, 21-year-old agent who doesn't have the life experience. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't answer the question the same way for them anyway. Okay, well, what, what are they going to do? So let's say they're listening to us now and they're going, well, I don't have the life experience. For me, it'd be, guys, get out there and sit in every dining room, lounge room, whatever you can, whether they're selling, they're not selling, get the experience. Yeah. Go out and speak to as many people, go through as many scenarios and listen. Get married and divorced a couple yeah, of times. I, <laughs> for, for me, I don't think the live experience is, is that important. Okay. Mainly because I didn't have too much of a live experience when I was uh, 21 and I won awards in insurance and I had had no idea about even what insurance was about. <laughs> like you had to have a philosophy to think about buying insurance, you know? One gets so better with the cheese. For me, it's it's not even that. To me, if you want to be a successful salesperson, you have to have a goal. You have to have a goal or even the vision of what you want out of this career. That if not, then you don't have that reason that's going to be able to break through blocks. That was my number three, actually, because then we went into a big conversation because Crystal was listening and everyone got involved about uh, her why and different bits and pieces. So I was trying to remember what I said number three was, but it was actually having a big goal because yeah. in our job you have to have a bloody good reason for getting out of bed every morning because the, the highs and the lows and the we're coming into summer now. Uh, this time last year we had Darren door knocking in a black suit by his own choice in 40-degree heat. 15 kilometres a day. You've got to have a bloody good reason for wanting to do that yeah. to do it. So, yeah, 100% agree with TL. Yeah. I think but but, but going back to the being persuasive, I, I was looking at some of the points and I don't know whether it's right, but that's what I came up with is that you need to have five conditions for sales to happen. Number one, I think to be persuasive, you have to have the red carpet being laid because in order to help your persuasion, the other person has to really look at you favorably. You know, if, if I turn up and I'm in uh, shorts and thongs, and maybe the red carpet's not laid before me. However, if before you saw me, you have all this social media that is sending out the right message to you over the, the years that we've known or spoken to each other over the phone. And then before I turn up, maybe if one of my assistants delivered a pre-listing pack, these are fostering a level of psychology already in the receptor as to looking at you differently. You're no longer real estate agent. You're the person they, that celebrity they've been following. So for me, that's one of the conditions for uh, being persuasive. So f for me, the second conditions uh, for, the, for being persuasive is from the six human needs being laid out by Anthony Robbins. You have to find the needs that these people are wanting to have met. Because once you know those needs, then yes, it's easy to persuade. How can I persuade you in something that you don't want to have met? So by knowing your needs, then I can do something about it, right? For me, number three is you need to know the song. We spoke about it already. Do they want you to sing like Eminem? Do they want you to sing like Barbara Streisand, just to take the two extreme, right? And then persuasion can only start. So in the persuasion process, you can only start it when you have gained trust. So as a salesperson, you have to become a thermostat and gauge whether that trust level has reached the necessary level before which you start persuading. Many people put start persuading too early, and this is why it doesn't work, right? And, and there's no point shooting all your, what is it? Um, Roots. Before uh, you need to be doing it, mm. right? And the last point for me <laughs> for condition to a great persuasion is you have to find a time when they are excited enough to want to be persuaded. 
because I think that persuasion is not a matter of manipulation. Persuasion is something that people want. And I find that people often want to be persuaded, but they also resist persuasion. Mm. Yeah, even, even I think I said before, the word doesn't even sit right with me. The, the, and the, the word persuasion? Yeah, it'd be yeah. A, and a, I guess because it'd be too closely correlated with manipulation. I'd, yeah. Don't want to have to persuade people, but that, I mean that's what we do in everyday life. We had to persuade our wives to. Um, Took me a while. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Some more persuasive than others, but um, I think and, and adding, I guess it, it all gets summed up under the heading of being able to read the play. Yeah, you need to be able to read the play on all levels. You need to know who you're talking to. You need to know what to talking to them about, and you need to be able to pick those moments. Where you've hit the struck the right note or the right chord, you also just as importantly need to be able to pick those moments where you haven't. There's, there's a lot of e- EQ involved in in the persuasion methods. There's a, you've got to be able to feel the situation. You're absolutely right. You need to be able to sit there with your eyes open rather than your brain just ticking over yeah. about what you're going to say next. Because many, been in many a listing appointment where I've known straight away that I've said the wrong <laughs> thing, and if you pick up on it straight away, you can. Dance. Tap, tap dance around it and, mm. or come back to it or reframe it or whatever. But if you're so close-minded to the fact that these people may actually not be interested in what you're saying, you're going to lose more than not. And they're just sitting there going, this guy isn't even listening to me. Yeah. This guy hasn't heard a word yeah, or and said. That's, and that's it. What there's old saying, uh, you've got two ears and one mouth, use them in that ratio. That guy walks out that's and he says, oh, I did a great, oh, I did a great presentation. And they'd never ring him to tell him that he didn't get the listing. And he yeah. comes on and goes, oh, Ah, oh, must have been on fee. Must have been that that bastard other agent must have just dropped their fee, you know. And um, that's the you can pick them a mile away. The agents that are going to be like that. And the to me, the, the, there's also a difference between uh, persuasive agents and pushy agent in this way. Pushy agents go say, through their lines. Persuasive agents go through the lines that work. So read the play. So they both know the hundred lines that they need to study, but. Instead of going through the 100 lines, like the pushy agent, the persuasive agents know which one of the 100 they ought to use and which one should be deleted from their presentation. And that's the difference between being pushy and persuasive. In boxing or fighting in general, there's two types of, well, no, there's many different types of fighters, but you'll get a bull go into a ring and throw the best 10 punches he's got straight away as hard as he can and all he's interested in doing is knocking this person out. He doesn't do it and he's tired after two minutes and the other person comes back and kicks the crap out of him because he's fired all his guns. The smart boxer, the technical boxer, knows I could hit you in the jaw as hard as I want right now, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to tap your jaw. I'm going to tap your jaw. I'm going to conserve my energy. I'm going to throw a punch to your body. I'm not going to throw every punch. They call it just touching him and you'll hear the good coaches yell, just touch him, just touch him, and they'll touch you over and over and over and over and over again until you stick your head up and then it's... Big one. Good night. Yeah. Whereas, and if you liken that to the agents, the guys that walk in the door and just try and throw king hits the whole time, yeah. they're never going to win. We say never going to win. The bastards still get listings every now and again. And, and, and then, depending on the market conditions, and I put that, I put that at the fault of uneducated vendors or, or people who are willing to get pushed. You got a guy come in, talk only about himself, and bully you into a signature, and you still sign up. Oh, no, I, I think that I probably would say that he's been persuasive for that person. <laughs> <laughs> it really it is, persuasive. I, I, think, I think that we can't, we can't really take the cop out that, you know, the sellers or the yeah. client is stupid. I, I think we're going to have to I really look. So stupid. If you're looking <laughs> at a client, the key is the client gives you the business. So he's got a combination lock that opened his signature, correct? For us, we have to find that. And, and that is what a persuasive agent does. We have to remember, we do this day in, day out. Sellers usually might do it once in 50 years, once in 10 years, whatever it yeah. may be. So, I oh, Really, mate, I've sold a house before. I know everything if about that agent. <laughs> if that agent meets their expectation or exceeds their expectation at that appointment, you know what? He may, that may be the simple combination to that lock that Thomas is talking about. Or and sometimes they, it's a case of they think we're all the bloody same. Well, so. like used car salesmen or lawyers or whatever it may be or everyone that puts coppers in the same basket, you know, what we all do it and, and it's very unfortunate. 
Um, but we also have touched on previously about people, you know, taking a little bit more time to have some critical thinking about things. There's a lot of people that don't. And I just realised myself, I bought a, a car many years ago. Um, and then I look back now, I did no research on the car. I didn't look into the car. I said, I like the car, I like the look, went and bought it. And at 100,000 kilometres, a bloody engine blew up. So there was no critical thinking put into the point when I bought that car. If I had read the reviews at that time, that decision may have been different. So whose fault is it? It's my fault. It's not the car company's fault for selling me a shit car. It's my fault for not doing my research. And I think the smart agent will now understand, as we were just talking about, I was talking about with Thomas when he left the room before, that where I, what I'm seeing now that just about every listing appointment I go to, is they've called three or four agents out. Right, yeah. So whether it's people have had more time on their hands because of COVID or whatever the reason is, their lives aren't as busy where they is just the call the precious? first. I don't know. I, d- I don't know what it is, but it's definitely changed. Yeah. And the smart agent works out that that's changed. So their their persuasion goes around, okay, I'm probably not going to get the signature today. What am I going to present and how can I help these yeah. people remember me after they've spoken to five agents? Yeah. And y- you get the feedback. I'm getting the feedback when I go into the listing appointments. Oh, we had so-and-so out yesterday and all they wanted to do was tell me this and tell me that and tell me this and they're, they're gone. They're off my list and yeah, in the back of my head I'm going to be guilty. That's one less we've got to worry about. But, not. I mean, we spoke about new people coming into the industry, but even people who are already in it, especially only – you're only allowed to listen to this if you're in our network. You're not allowed to listen to this if you're another <laughs> agent. Understand that – And if you are another agent, we are hiring. Understand that the times have changed and, and yeah. you, you can't go in there. So if someone says, I'm going to speak to five agents, I think the worst tactic you could probably go is the pushy bully tactics. I don't think you can – I think you can make it real bad for yourself yeah. and I don't think you're any chance of bullying someone out of talking to five other agents. And I think you're on the point there, Cam, that you won't change people's mind of talking to a lot of agents. You need to be the one that stands out. Yeah. What I worked out many, not many years ago, quite a few years ago was that I don't go in there and start spruiking what I do. The first thing I say, I sit down and I ask them. It'd be a short um, conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. He started. He started. <laughs> he's brought it on. All right, he's opened the. Uh, he's, he's opened the floodgates. Right here we go. But um, I, I simply ask him. I said, and I say to him straight, "You're probably interviewing a couple of agents. They've probably sat down in front you, in front of you, and said, I do this, I do that, I do this, I do that.' I said, I'm not worried about what I do. I said, oh, I'm worried about what you want." So can you tell me exactly what do you want from this transaction? Don't give away all your tips, mate. But you know what? If my competition are listening to this, that's great because I've got to change my, my, <laughs> my mindset saying they're not my competition, they're my rivals. And so it makes me be oh, a look different at you mindset, go. huh? Ah, yeah? Well done. But um, that's, so that's what I like to do is, and, and it makes those people um, and power of persuasion, you stand out from the crowd. You start really catering to what their requirements are, not what you want to tell them. And then there's, I mean, there's a skills around that. If you know they're talking to five agents and you let yourself be the first one, you've probably let yourself down there. Well, I, I've, yeah, you're right. Um, and sometimes you can't find that out. And then when I get there, you find out and say, well, how about I go home and I do some more research on your property because uh, I didn't know you had this, this, and this. Start with the first question, yeah, and that's exactly and that's right. where your training comes right. into it more. If if it's if it's going to tighten up and you're up against more people and persuasion, one of the best things you can do in that situation is say, are you talking to any other agent? A lot of people are scared to ask it. Even when I'm training my guys on it, and I go, I want you to ask before you book an appointment, the second last question is, are you talking to any other agents? Oh, yeah, we're having three more out. Do you mind if I ask who they are? Oh, I can't tell you that. Ah, oh, come on, do me a favour. Have a bit of a laugh with them. They might not tell you. And they go, all right, do me one told. Let me be last. Why? Oh, I'm just superstitious. Let me be last. All of a sudden, after five agents, we're the last one out, we're the last one in their mind, and you're the best chance of getting a signature. Some people go, oh, no, just get out there because if you don't get out there, sometimes you'd rather not go out than be the first on a list of five or six agents. Then your method of persuasion is, look, you're going to talk to a lot of agents, you're going to get a lot of information, you're going to get paralysis by analysis. Your, your whole The whole game changes when you're first versus last. So, and that comes into persuasion techniques. So let's say you're the first. My boys asked me this the other day. Let's say that you're the first. And you didn't know you're the first, but you're the first agent. What do you do? You can't close it, but you're the first agent. What do you do? Oh, we're going to give away all our secret sauce, mate. There's there's, there's heaps you can do. One thing I'll always do, one thing I'll always do is still still ask for the business, right? 
You'd be crazy not Always to. Always do it. And I tell them that at the start. Look, I know you said you're going to talk to three other agents, but at the end of all this, I'm going to ask you for the business. I'd be mad driving all the way out here not to. And at the end, I still ask, all right? And they go, oh. And someone said to me the other day, I was waiting for you to ask because you said you were, and if you hadn't have asked, you were gone, all right? So, and then a lot of it is, you know, what are you hoping to hear from these other guys that I haven't already told you, all that stuff. But once you leave, then you've got to stand out more. So something I picked up from Darren Butcher, I hope he doesn't mind me spilling his secret sauce, but a video, we do a thank you card as soon as we leave, but a video recapping what you've spoken about that gets texted to him. You go back to the office, you record it straight away saying, guys, thanks so much for your time. Um, just want to go over a couple of the key points that we spoke about so, you know, nothing gets lost in translation. Just and You've got to stand out when you get there. Well, you better stand out when you leave if you're not going to be the last agent in there, I think. Power of persuasion. When you're there, they might need a gardener. They might need someone to clean windows, whatever it may be. Do some paint touch-ups. I've got a painter. I've got a handyman or whatever it is. If you're the first agent, the very next day you're sending those details, you follow up with a phone call. That's one of the things, whether it's the first agent or the last agent, I always exceed expectation and do what you say you're going to do. Two things. The last thing is, if I'm the first agent, I try and rebook to be the last agent again. At the presentation, and I'll be totally honest with them, some owners will just get tired of interviewing agents and sign with the last person. Do me a favour, like you've not done today, don't sign with the last agent, but let me come out and see you again after uh, you've sat with that other agent on a Saturday morning or whatever it may be and get in, and get in the door a, a, another time. If they allow that to happen and you still don't get the listing, well, you, you've fucked up big time, I think. But, uh, yeah, well, listen, it, it works with some people. It, it, it may not work with everyone. Right. Yeah? For me, my philosophy is going to be different now with the multiple agents being uh, uh, interviewed. Yeah. Yep. I think, for me, I would rather be the Porsche among the other five guys competing with you. If you're a Porsche, whether they see you first, second, third, or last, if you're a Porsche, they still want it. Fair enough. So be the Porsche from the beginning, and hence my first point is that red carpet. Do you have that red carpet before? Do you have the red carpet after? And are you wowing them in between? If not, it doesn't matter, I think, your first, last. How many times have I been into presentation? You think that COVID's the only one that's getting people to see like three or four? It has happened throughout all the, the ages because some people will be like that, especially the conscientious type of people. So just be the Porsche. Just be that car that they can't afford not to take. Yep. Then you in the box seat. And so for that, I say to people a few days ago when I was in an office, how is your presentation? If you open your presentation kit, is that the presentation kit of a Porsche or is that the presentation kit of a, I don't know, a, 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 a ladder? And I know no one's got a ladder in Australia. So what is it? <laughs> a Jeep. <laughs> so, so, a Jeep. A Jeep, yeah. <laughs> Let's say Jeep. No, no, ladder. I mean, which, which, which is actually very, a very easy car to double in value. All you have to do is fill it up. <laughs> And put new tyres on it. <laughs> that's good for you. So here it is. That's why I don't mind being pushy. But, you know, one of the things that I believe, you have to start being pushy. As a real estate agent, as a salesperson, don't worry if you come across pushy. Because being pushy is the first step to being persuasive. You know, when you... Start pushing and you realize and you get smart and you realize, no, that's the wrong way of pushing this person or now I'm pushing wrongly here. you smart enough to improve on your techniques. And suddenly, after a few years, they say, wow, you're good, you're so persuasive. No, because that persuasion that I have learned has come from many years of being pushy and changing my pushiness and rectifying the way that I've done it wrong. So persuasion is pushing us with a poker face on. No, we've experienced. Yeah. All right? All right. Great. Awesome. <laughs>